guys. Uh, for this video, we're going to do our first pattern, uh, a very simple pattern, so a good place to start. We're going to make a pattern for a uh, small pillowcase. And, and just to give you a little bit of a visual reference, it'll look just like this. And this is pretty much exactly what we're going to do. We're going to have um, a, this is the back of the pillow, so it has two pieces that overlap. You can kind of pull them outwards uh, and pull the, put the pillow uh, in between the um, sort of opening that the layers create. And the front is uh, simply uh, one solid piece. Well, not, does, won't have this little uh, 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 seam in it, but this is a good view for the back. I really sort of got to put the back. No one has any pictures of the backs of the pillows. Uh, Anywho, so one big 16 by 16 piece for the front and two overlapping pieces to create the back. So let's hop on over to the school's computer and get started. Okay, so that's where we were in our last video, so let's just delete that so we can start anew. Um, and if you ever want to get anything out of your piece window, uh, you can always right click on it and uh, go ahead and delete it. Oh, sorry, you have to edit, cut it. There we go. So we're starting with a nice, uh, fresh window. And so we're going to have two pattern pieces, of course, one for the front piece and one for the back piece. And this is, again, going to be a 16 by 16 square pillow. So um, our piece, new, create new piece, re create rectangular piece, is going to be the perfect place to start for this. So I'm going to do that. As you can see, here we are, piece, new piece, create rectangular piece. Select that. And I'm going to name it front pillow. And uh, like I said, it's going to be 16 by 16. So we're going to go ahead and 16 by 16 and hit OK. Uh, here we are, front pillow. Fantastic. Um, I like to work with my uh, grain lines going up, although it doesn't really matter for this uh, pattern. Um, but it's a great um, excuse to use one of our other tools. Either we can rotate it up or we can even just change the baseline. Um, so let's change the baseline. It's a little bit easier. I'm going to set the baseline direction and I like my grain lines going up like so. Again, you don't really need to do that, but if you want to have a little extra practice with some of our new tools, we can. Okay. Now, uh, let's get finished up on our uh, front pillow. Um, there's not too much else to do. Again, this is basically it. We just have to uh, adorn it with all of its accoutrements that it needs. It needs seam allowance. It needs pattern info. Um, and we're going to put a couple notches in there, too. We didn't go over notches before, um, but it is uh, a great thing to have on your patterns. We'll go over a little bit about what notches are when we get there. First, let's put seam allowance on. Now, this is just going to have a basic seam allowance all the way around where it gets attached to the back pieces. Um, so we're going to have an even half inch going all the way around this front pillow piece. So I'm going to use the seam, add seam tool here. And again, like we learned in our last video, if I want an even seam allowance all the way around a pattern piece, all I have to do is pick one of the points on that pattern piece, click once, then click on that same point again. Okay? So we're going to set that to half an inch in seam width. And I'm going to minor the corners. And again, this is going to allow our corners to be nice and pointy. And there we are. Now we have our seam allowance. Looking good. All right, now let's put um, some pattern information on our pattern piece. Now, it's important to remember that every single pattern piece 
in a, a garment or in this case a pillow or any sort of unit needs pattern information and it, they all need a certain set of information now some pieces might have a little bit more or a little bit less um, but they all need some of the basic in for pattern information. Every single piece, no matter how small, even those spacing pieces, even those little collar pieces, they all need pattern information. And we're going to set that in with our text tool, which I selected up here. Or of course, you can go to your general tools and or just hit T as your keyboard uh, shortcut. So I'm going to hit it there. So what kind of pattern information do we need? Um, well, it's always good to start with what's called a style number. And for this, we can sort of put it in as whatever we want. I'm just going to set it as one, two, three, um, because why not? It's just a sort of a test piece. Um, so what is a style number? Well, a style number is how pattern makers um, and even sample rooms keep their patterns organized. So this is a very simple pattern. It only has two pieces. But as you can imagine, when we move to more complex garments, like say a jacket, it could have upwards of 20 different pattern pieces. That's quite a bit. And um, if you're our sample house or a pattern maker, you not only have that one jacket with 20 pattern pieces, you have a whole slew of patterns with many different pattern pieces. And it gets a little bit harder to keep it all um, organized, especially when, say, a collar piece or a sleeve piece from one jacket looks awful like a collar or sleeve piece from another pattern. How do I know what pieces go to what garment? Well, that's what the style number does. Every garment or every unit gets a style number. And so every piece in that pattern has the same style number. That's how I know that everything labeled one, two, three goes to the same garment or the same unit. So if I had a, uh, you know, a, a, a big wind came through my pattern room and messed up all my patterns, I could still put them back together um, within every garment and every unit. I know that uh, the sleeve pattern piece labeled uh, four, five, six goes with all the other pieces labeled four, five, six, and this other sleeve over here that's eight, nine, ten goes with eight, nine, ten. So it's important to uh, designate a style number uh, for all of your pieces. It's very good to have it to have. It looks professional. And again, uh, I'm sure your uh, pattern collections will be growing. So it will help you keep your patterns together and organized. Uh, what pieces go to what. So that's what a style number is. And again, it's an important piece of information to put on every single pattern piece within a garment or within a unit. Okay. The next one we're going to do is we're going to put down a size. Um, so whenever we're working with a specific pattern, we're working with a specific size, whether it be an eight or a ten or a small or a medium. Um, we don't typically give pillows numbered sizes, so let's just call this a medium-sized pillow and put it as such. Now sizes will go on every single pattern piece just like the style number. So look at that. Every single pattern piece gets a style number. Every single pattern piece gets a size. Now in addition, we want to put in some cutting information. Now the cutting information lets um, the pattern maker or the seamstress or whomever is creating the pattern um, how many pieces should be cut and of what fabric. So we might have a piece, um, so like a, a typical collar piece, we typically need two pieces of that plus interfacing. So, um, or we might need it to be cut out of lining, or we might need it to be cut out of a contrasting uh, fabric or, or whatever else. So our cutting information lets us know how many pieces of this pattern piece need to be cut and out of what um, fabric. So this is our front piece. We only need one of it to create a, um, a garment, or I'm sorry, a garment, but a pillow. Um, so I'm going to cut one, and I'm going to label it self. Now self is the uh, word we use when we are referring to the main fabric of a garment. 
So um, since this is the front piece and it's going to be the sort of decorative, uh, colorful fabric, we're going to cut it out of the self fabric. Okay, now that's all we need. We have the style information, the size, and the cutting information. And again, this is the basic pattern information that is needed for all pattern pieces. In addition to, of course, uh, a descriptive pattern piece name, which we will get on our grain line, and of course the grain line itself. But it's hard to forget the grain line in Optitech since every piece automatically gets uh, outfitted with a grain line. We just have to make sure that it's correct. Now it might look small here, but remember that this is a lot smaller uh, in size than it would be actually. This is sort of shrunken down. Um, so, you know, um, when if we were to ever print this out, it would be a lot uh, bigger and easier to read. So you don't have to really worry about sizing that. If you want to, you can. Of course, you can just make it a little bit bigger with your arrow if you'd like. Boop, boop, boop. Duck. Um, but again, don't, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, now the last thing I'd like to put on here is notches, but I'm gonna hold off on that for a second um, because where we put the notches is gonna make a lot more sense after I do the back pieces. Okay, so let's get started on the back piece. We're gonna start the same way by going to piece New piece, create rectangular piece. Now, it's not going to be the same dimensions, so if you remember that picture I showed you before, it's only going to go up about uh, three quarters of the way and overlap. So um, we'll have about a quarter of overlap in the middle here, and uh, the rest will be sort of just the sheets, and we're going to have two of them here. So uh, the length here is going to match up. It's going to be that full 16 inches. So it's going to have this full span right here. So 16, that's fine. But we only want about three quarters of the distance up here. And three quarters of 16 is, of course, 12 inches. So for that, we're going to put it in right there. And I am going to change it. Actually, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a mistake and forget to label my back piece properly so I can just review how to change it um, once it's created. Okay, so there's our piece, our um, nice back piece here. Again, we can see that it spans the entire bottom of our uh, front piece, um, but only comes up about 12 inches uh, uh, here on our 16 piece. So again, about three, three quarters of the way. Now, again, I don't want it piece, piece, or draft should never be the name of your pattern piece. Um, it's not descriptive, it's very confusing. We always want it to be um, as clear a name as possible. So um, my piece properties is already up so I can go there, but if it's not, we right click on the piece that we want to change and go to attributes. And we can see the Piece Properties menu uh, pops up. So I'm going to click on Piece and change it to what it should be, which of course should be Back Pillow. Hit Enter when you're done. And now we have a properly labeled back piece. Um, however, our grain is not correct. So if we can imagine how it's going to be layered, it's going to be layered on the piece like this, and then the second piece is going to come down and we have that bit of overlap in the middle here. But we see the grains are going in two different directions. So I want the grain line for the back piece to go upright, just like the um, front piece. So when it gets layered on, we'll have the um, Grain lines going in the same direction. So let's go to our set baseline direction and correct that grain line. I'm going to click here once and click here again, and now we have a matching grain line for the back. Fantastic. Okay, let's add seam allowance. Now the seam allowance is going to be a little bit different than it was on the front. 
Um, where it matches with the front, we're going to have that half inch seam allowance. So again, if I just layer this on top so you can see, um, seam allowance width should always match where they're going to be sewn together. So on these edges down here, it's going to be half an inch, but up here, we need to finish it. And we're going to use a sort of um, hem-like technique to finish this edge. And as I mentioned before in previous video, our hem allowances are typically a little bit longer than our uh, normal seam allowances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an inch and a half finish up here where the rest of it only gets about a half an inch. So let's go to our uh, add seam tool. And remember, we need to work in a clockwise manner. Okay, so I'm going to put the half inch first, first, the half, sorry, half inch seam allowance first. And since I want to work clockwise, I'm going to start here at the upper right hand corner, click once, and I'm going to move over here. Now, does it doesn't look like, you know, it looks like I'm setting it for this top, but remember, since this direction is counterclockwise, objects can't think like that. It can only think like this. Okay, now I don't need to actually go down and do all this. I'm just showing you how Opti Text is thinking. Uh, I've shown a few students this and they, you know, when they're putting their thing, they move their mouse all the way around like this. You don't need to do that. You can just go directly to the point, you know, from here to here. Um, because again, that's how Opti Text thinks. It thinks clockwise. And we're going to set that half inch seam allowance. And we already have my presets from before. Uh, my nice miter corners, which is what I want. And you can set this at two as well. We're going to have this one. We're not going to miter these corners. We're going to have it come up flush to be able to create the um, half inch, I'm sorry, the uh, one and a half inch hem uh, properly. Okay. So there we are. See the little corners are mitered. Fantastic. And we're going to go ahead and now put in our one and a half inch hem allowance up here. So instead of going from here to here to do what's left, I'm going to start here and go over here. So click once over here, click again over here. And I'm going to type in 1.5. And I do want this one to go up, so it means it'll just go up nice and flush straight up here, no mitering. There we are. So we have our longer hem allowance up here and all the rest of our seam allowance down here. Okay, well on our way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my text tool and put in my pattern information that, of course, we need for every piece. So I'll grab my text tool, click on the piece, and the style number is, of course, the same. It'll always be the same from piece to piece. Every single piece of a pattern is going to have that same style number. Again, that's what, how we know it belongs together. And of course, the size will also remain the same within a pattern. Um, now, the only difference in this pattern information is going to be the cutting information. Where we had one here, we need two of these guys, right? Because there's two overlapping pieces, one that comes from down here, and then one that comes from up here, and then, of course, they overlap in the middle. So instead of cut one, I'm going to cut two. And let's imagine this was like sort of the picture that I showed you, and we're going to have a different fabric in back than we do in the front. Now, this is very common for pillows. Um, it cuts the price a little bit because usually we'll display them with one side facing out and the other side um, toward the couch or bed or whatever. So um, we'll use a little bit of a more expensive, fancy fabric on the front face and then a cheaper backing fabric uh, on the back side. So this is going to be a different fabric for the back, so we need to indicate that. So um, we can use uh, words like contrasting um, or backing um, or anything like that. I'm going to use contrast, but it's a little bit uh, more likely. We're going to see the phrase contrast um, on a, uh, a pattern that we will backing depending on what it is. So, you know. Um, so cut to contrast. So that's letting me know, um, you know, I'm going to cut one piece to create a pillow. I need to cut one piece of this 
of the self, of the more expensive, um, sort of fancy, maybe patterned or printed fabric. And for the back, I need two of the contrasting uh, fabric. Okay, and then there we are. And then just like before, if we would like, we can make that a little bit bigger, but again, that's not really necessary. Okay, almost done. So very good, very easy, very uh, quick, nice little first project. The last thing I'm gonna do is I wanna put on uh, some notches on the front piece. Now I'm, to describe that, I'm going to put my back piece on top of the front piece to sort of show us how it's going to line up. Now notches in a pattern uh, do a lot of things. Um, for the majority of times, what they do is they help us line up the different pattern pieces uh, for sewing. So um, along the seam, we'll see a notch, and then we'll see a corresponding notch on the other uh, seam for another pattern piece for its matching seam. And I know that I need to match those notches when putting the pieces together. And we can help keep our grain aligned and the proportions correct uh, and things like that. Now notches do a lot of different things too. They can also indicate uh, where a pocket should line up, uh, where a zipper should end. Um, lots of different things can be indicated by notches, but they basically help us organize our pattern pieces and show how the pieces are going to come together. So in this instance, like we said, we have two of these back pieces and they're gonna match up on the edges like this. And this part is going to be finished, but not attached. It's going to be open, so again, we can put that pillow piece in there. So where I would put notches is to show where this edge is going to end on the front piece. So what I want to do is I want to do that for both layers of the back as well. So I need a notch here and here, but also for the other overlapping piece, so only one here and here. So um, let's put in our notches and again they're going to help us uh, um, lay our back pieces properly when it comes for, to sewing. Uh, this is the notch tool up here. Um, add notch, keyboard shortcut N or of course we can go to our toolbox and it is in points and notches under add notch. So we're going to select that and it looks like a little star and uh, line and uh, um, little T uh, uh, next to it. Now we're going to set it down and you don't have to be too precise when you click because we're going to set the measurements manually just like we were able to set the measurements manually with our add point on contour tool. So I'm going to click it and we get a measurement box automatically popping up and it looks almost exactly like our add point on contour uh, measurement box. And indeed, it is um, pretty much the same. Uh, the values down here work the same. So let's review them really quickly. So whenever I put down a point or a notch, it's looking to the closest grading points that it sits in between. And for this case, it's this one, number one, and this one, number two. Now, just like points, notches look to grading points and will ignore any non-grading points. Okay? So just keep that in mind. It's not really relevant for this project, but it probably will be in the future. Now also remember that Optitex thinks clockwise. So we move around the figure like this. So that allows us to know what the difference between the previous and the next point is. So if we're traveling around the figure like so, this is the previous point to the point in question, or notch in question in this case, and this would be the next, because I hit this first, notch, next. So that's how we look at it. Now if that's a little tricky for you, you can also look at the numerical values of your points. The previous one will always be lower than the second one because of course it labels its points going in a clockwise direction. So this would be the previous point and this is the last point. The only exception is if you are between the last point and the beginning point. Then it would be the last point is previous and this one is 
um, next. Anyway, so this, of course, is going to be my previous point. And this, of course, is going to be my next point. Now, we have a couple options for putting in our uh, uh, measurements. We can do it numerically or we can do it proportionately. So I'm going to do a couple numerically and a couple proportionately, again, just to show you both functions in action. So we know that I want um, a notch where the pieces are going to end. So let's assume that um, this is a little closer. This is for the back piece that's going to come down here. And I know that this distance should be about 12 inches because, of course, this is 12 inches. And this is showing where that edge is going to come across. Okay? So this is my next point. I need it to be 12 inches from my next point. So all I need to do is type in 12 um, from my next point and hit OK. There we are. Now let's do it for the other side. Now in this case, this is now my previous point instead of the next point. So we're going to put our 12 inch distance from previous instead of next. Right, so if we come down like this, but again we can see that even though it gave us another notch, the numbers have changed, this is lower, this is higher, so that is going to be my previous point. Alrighty, okie dokie. Now what I want to do is, so this put a notch down here, but it also put a grading point. So I don't really want to be measuring from here. If I'm going to be measuring from here up, it's going to get in the way. Now, I could always outskirt that because, you know, 12, 16 minus 12 is 4, so I could just measure 4 down from these guys. Um, but just to show you um, the difference, so if I'm going to put one right here, see, now it's measuring from this point instead of this point. So if I do 12 from my previous, it is going to be, you know, all the way up here. So keep that in mind. It's always important to remember um, where you're taking your measurements from. And if you have created a grading point accidentally by placing a notch, and, or if it's just simply in the way from where you want to be taking measurements, you need to toggle that grading off. Now, of course, we can sort of skirt the issue by uh, simply um, doing 4 from the next uh, instead of 12 from the previous. But what I am going to do is I'm going to toggle it off here just to show you. So I'm going to click on that point and the internal properties pops up. If it doesn't, right click on the point and go to attributes and this will pop up and you can toggle off the grading. And honestly, there's really no need for any of these points to be grading. So um, I'm just going to toggle them off. You don't need to just as long as your pla notch placements are correct. Now, I want to show you the proportionate value um, option down here. Now, like I said, our notches are coming up about, you know, this distance is three quarters or 75% of the front pillow pattern. So what we're going to do is um, instead of using the numerical values or the absolute values, I'm going to type in a proportionate value. So again, this would be my next point, and I know it's from here all the way up here. I know that is 3 quarters or 75% of the distance, so I'm going to type in 0.75 from my next point. And as you can see, the numbers have snapped to what we should be seeing, and uh, again, that's always a good way to check on your work to see if you have the right proportion uh, down. So I have 12 here, 4 here, that's what we're used to seeing, that's our 12 inches here. Um, but again, just wanted to show you how the proportion would work in action as well. All right, looks good. Hit OK. And it is looking done. Um, congratulations on your first pattern piece, or your first, uh, first two pattern pieces, first complete pattern. Um, nice, simple pattern piece. Hope you were able to ease into Optitex. Um, uh, all right. Uh, let's save it and conclude the lesson. So what I'm going to do is I have a thumb drive in and hopefully, if not, uh, up here we can a lot of times um, 
allow for. So make sure, so see what I did there, we went there, and uh, make sure that this is toggled on to allow access to removable storage. This will allow you to use your thumb drive in the remote desktop um, uh, screen. And I'm gonna hope it shows up in my save. So I'm gonna save as. looking at my spring students, but let's look at PC. And here it is. And I'm going to save it as, uh, and for you, let's uh, uh, save it as your name, pillow. Um, and you're going to keep it as a PDS file. Uh, anything else, I won't be able to read on OptiText. So save it as your name, pillow, um, to your flash drive or wherever else. Or if you want to um, uh, save it to the desktop and immediately email it to me, that's fine. Um, but uh, CC yourself because, uh, you know, always back up your um, uh, work. Um, it's always good to do that it, in case I don't get it or it bounces or what, whatever can happen. Just always back up your work somehow. Um, again, I really do recommend using the uh, flash drive. Um, but, of course, if you want to even back that up, you can immediately email it to yourself. So save it and then email it to me. And then you'll know that it's saved, of course, because the file name will change up here. And that is all. And I hope you guys are learning Optitext and taking to it easy. Um, you know, again, take time not just to do the assignment, but just to play around with the tools, have fun with it, uh, explore the different functions. Um, I always find that's the best way to learn something new, especially software, is just to kind of get in and um, uh, play around with all the tools. And have a great weekend, and I'll uh, see you next week when we will start the basic skirt sloper. All right, bye guys. I gotta log out first, so it was a little. Okay, bye bye.